Hey guys, big news. We are going to Miami Boat Show February 16th, 17th and 18th. Make sure you watch your social media. On Instagram, we'll be doing stories, posts to say where we'll be, at what time and when. We are doing a Patreon meetup in a secret location, so make sure you check your Patreon. I know a lot of you don't check your emails that you receive, so make sure you do. We're super excited to see you guys. So, oh, Lindo's, he's gonna be staying here, but <laughs> we're super excited to see you guys, so hopefully you can make time. Thanks for following. Let's roll this episode. Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Parlay Revival. So after getting struck by lightning for the second time, we had quite a few more parts to replace before we were ready to sail up the Pacific coast to Mexico. It had been a tough couple of weeks trying to troubleshoot what we had lost exactly, but it was exciting to think that we were getting close to being able to finally leave Golfito and start thinking about the biggest adventure of our lives, the Pacific crossing from Mexico. Hurricane Irma Here we are at this marina. Hi, my name's Colin. I used to be a chief engineer on super yachts, but gave it all up to buy a hurricane damaged Lagoon 450. My friends and I are fixing it up as we go and are determined to circumnavigate the entire planet. So subscribe if you want some inspiration to live life to the fullest. 20 years from now, you will be more disappointed by the things you didn't do than by the things you did. So what are you waiting for? Morning everybody, it's sunny, We're doing our laundry and we thought we would run these engines. Like I said yesterday, we got no navigation equipment, so uh, no depth sound or anything, so we'll just use Navionox in our phones, hopefully the engines run nicely and just make sure that's all working because if uh, the lightning affected these engines in any way, I want to know about it now so that when we go to these boat shows I can pick up some parts, hopefully they start. That's one. That's two. I'm excited actually. Haven't driven the boat for a long time. Old fashioned Motley crew. One of the problems I have is I, I got no rudder indicator, so I don't know exactly what my rudder's doing. Also, it looks really shallow here. Have we come out at low tide before? I don't have a depth sounder. Yeah, you ready? Actually, Yeah, you're sweet. Give it to her. Oh, it feels good to be going out, boys. Pump? Yeah. The Motley crew's pumped anyway, have a look at us. <laughs> <laughs> at least they're clean. Look, we're hardly even out of the damn marina and the boys have got all the lines out already. How good is this? Well, we just put the rods out, hopefully we catch heard. that sailfish from what we seen the other day. <laughs> so good to be out on the ocean, there's just nothing like it. So excited right now. We've got both engines. We're only doing 2,000 RPM each engine and we're doing 6.8 knots. So once they warm up a little bit more, I'll start pushing it a bit harder. Just really want to give them a good solid run. Oh, this is so good. Oh, what a day. Sun's out, gun's out. Oh, what a beautiful place. Engines are sounding so good. All right, let's rev it up. Let's go up to like 3000 or something, eh? Woo! thing I was checking the drone I haven't drift uh, flown this this drone for months and I just started it here on the table and because we're moving at eight knots it just immediately wanted to hold its position and it just flew straight into the galley there <laughs> so all the all the rotors the little blade thing he's got messed up so I gotta put the new ones on let's play some music and put the drone in the air Whales off the bow. 
How good is this? Oh my god. Water's like a mill pond. Oh shit, man! Whatever that is, is big. Humpback whales arrive annually to breed and give birth in the warm waters of Costa Rica. Here we see a mother and her calf who in the coming months will head back down towards Antarctica and may even go so far as Australia. This encounter was the very tail end of their annual migration. So the Pale Revival boys were very lucky indeed to witness such incredible grace and beauty. I don't know if you just heard that. Wow. Humpback straight in front, about 40 meters maybe. And then there's dolphins all around the outside. There's two humpbacks in the middle and then a big circle of dolphins. On the way over here, we saw one breach out of the wall, like half its body came out. What did it sound like? <laughs> Real old broken cow. Like, <laughs> 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 All right, so we spun around, started heading back towards the marina, and Jamie might have hooked something up. What do you got? I don't know. It's weird. It's like I wasn't even ready for it. I was just getting the line ready. Oh, tuna. We're so stoked. We love having poke bowls on the boat, um, but because we haven't had any fish the whole time we've been back for like three weeks, we've been having like rice with tuna, like a canned tuna. So we're pretty happy. Now we're talking about a real poke bowl. You quite a lot of meat on the tuna, even that size. What a fun little morning! Wasn't really expecting all of that. Literally come out just to do a sea trial on the engines. And we've seen dolphins, whales, and caught a tuna. That's the beauty of this life, is you never know what to expect. Shit like that can happen at any moment, and I love it. Um, All right, let's do a poke bowl. A real poke bowl. Welcome to another episode of Jamie's Theories. Uh, oh. This morning we're discussing a smoothie. And he says that the less ingredients inside a smoothie, the better. So he puts an apple and a bit of water and a cube of ice in there and uh, calls it a smoothie. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> the stick is still in there. You don't need... What's that smell? Put my shorts on. Oh, your shorts? <laughs> <laughs> I put an avocado on the smoothie this morning and he turned his nose up at it. A bit like my shorts. <laughs> okay, fine. we digress. In the jar, we Sorry. have... Soy with sesame seed sesame oil. oil. Cooking the rice. Oh, that's so good. Mmm, you good? Yeah, really good. Wish you guys could taste this. So fresh. So good. Long time since we had this. With a sriracha. How oh, good. What a morning. That was very unexpected. Alright, I'm gonna make a poke bowl. Okay, our first shipment from United States has arrived. Bunch of Ray, Ray Marine gear. This should technically be all of our Ray Marine gear except for the autopilot computer. They're having trouble locating a brand new one of those. But this is cool. Maybe we can get the wind vane working. A couple of new fans, switches. This is for an outdoor light that I want to install. A couple of these guys, because these got fried. Oh, port visors. These are cool. These go over the little portholes. When it rains, you can leave your porthole open, like this. This is for water. Gauges here don't work anymore. Oh, rain, 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 rain. This is an ozone generator, and it really gets rid of um, any mold and odors and stuff like that. So this will be really good. Costa Rica is just so humid, we just get so much mold. There we go. New lights, because we've lost so many of our lights. To get things into Costa Rica, to ship things in, you pay a hell of a lot of duty. Um, so to avoid that, we shipped everything to Panama and then found this slightly dodgy person who brings stuff across the border for us. 
and you don't pay any duty. We're leaving anyway. We're leaving Costa Rica, so there's no reason why we should pay import tax on this stuff. This is ships, goods, and transit. We just can't really get that happening in Costa Rica. Today is the day. <laughs> This is what a lot of you have been waiting for. I'm cutting my hair off. How long has it been like that? Oh, a few years now. What was the original inspiration for this? Boredom. I was bored. I've shaved my head my whole life, so I just left the patch on the back. And it was only meant to be for like a day. Then that day was two days, and then it was three days. It's been and then three it was years. Just like, and then it became like this long, and I thought, yeah, it's that long, I might as well keep going. And why today? Because I'm bored of it again. <laughs> but apparently it offends a lot of people. <laughs> it's offensive to some people. Oh, you're gonna let that bad boy dry and we'll knock her off. Okay, so we have started the troubleshooting process with the Raymarine equipment. Um, what we have done is we have completely disconnected the whole system and we're just starting right here at this sort of distribution plug here. And this red one here, we've given that 12 volts, so we've powered up this little plug. We tried the existing wind vane up there, and it's dead. Not surprising, there was a million volts coming down it. So just to test the equipment, we've plugged in this new Ram Marine wind vane, and this is a new uh, display, obviously. We're seeing uh, the wind speed and direction. That would be facing uh, ahead, that would be a stern. Okay, so not surprisingly, all of this gear is working, it's brand new. Um, so it's just a process of um, elimination now to find out what is corrupting the system. I think it only takes one component of the whole network to corrupt the whole system and then we'll get no pilot errors and all of this kind of stuff. You know, this is just standard troubleshooting procedures. So let's disconnect the power. I'm just going to just slowly build the network back up. This is called the backbone, the blue network cable. It's CTORC next generation but this won't work unless it is terminated at the end here okay we're just te testing depth it seems to me like our existing depth sounder has been fried so we have to replace the depth sounder which you can do in the water you just uh, quickly pull it out all the water will piss into the boat and then you jam the new one back in yeah, we're just building the system back up. So now we can... You said that before. Oh, it's just a process oh, process of elimination. Have I said that before? Yeah. This is just classic troubleshooting. This is all new stuff. <laughs> yeah, all new. <laughs> I've got the script here. Looks like a rat. <laughs> it does look like a rat. Smooth. There you go. Don't want to hear any more comments about any of our haircuts anymore. I like my long hair and I'm gonna have it till it falls out. <laughs> Not far off. Is, uh, <laughs> look at this. It's going back and back and back. I'll enjoy it while I can. Thank you very much. Okay, now depth. Um, I hate, hate doing this. But we have to install this while we're in the water. So what's gonna happen is I'm gonna pull the old one out and the ocean is gonna start flooding into the boat. Just gotta do it quickly. Done it before a few times, there's not too much pressure there, but it's just not a nice feeling opening up the boat to the ocean. Okay, here we go. It's got the O-rings in it. Oh, it's already coming in. Here we go. Oh, shit. Okay, ready? Old one out, new one in. There we go. There goes the bridge alarm. And now I'm gonna just get some stainless steel mousing wire so that that collar can't undo itself because we do not want that happening in an uncontrolled way. All right, I'm gonna go up the mast. I'm gonna install the new wind vane and just make sure that the wind instrument down here is working. And then I'll also install the new VHF antenna base. Touch more! Stop, 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 stop! So here's the old one. Let's take him off. Okay, where's the new one? Okay, so it's working. You got you got apparent wind speed and direction. This is the old mount 
for the VHF antenna. I'm gonna take it off and replace it with the new style. Boom. Right there. So I'm just gonna get that tight. Okay, cool. And I can drill these three holes. Yeah, it's actually kind of black. Look at that. Bit of carbon from when we got zapped. Man, I'm working blind here. I can't see. Can't see the connections up there. I have to do it by feel, guys. This is what I'm feeling. So I'm just gonna loosen those two screws and then pull this wire out and then just put the new one in exactly the same place. Oh what? that was loose. Okay, pull that out. What do we got? Okay, that's red. And the middle one. Let's do the black one first. Problem is I can't climb up any higher. I've got nothing to sort of push myself up with. This is not easy. Okay. Now the positive. Yeah, baby! Just gonna use some uh, self-amalgamating tape just to keep this out of the weather a little bit. As you stretch it, it sticks to itself and creates like a rubber seal. Okay. I thought I could get this all done in one go, but I'm gonna have to come back and just cable tie this. Did the mount. Now we've just put the antenna up, the light up, and the wind vane up. A lot going on up here now. Guys, I've just been filming for a day and a half with this GoPro. And this, they call this the mod kit, the modification kit. And it's got an external microphone on it. And for the second time, this wasn't recording sound. So I've lost all of this footage. It's absolutely useless, the parts where I'm talking anyway. So, sort your shit out GoPro. This is the second time this has happened. And it sucks when you lose all of that audio because you can't use the footage. We are, we're down an autopilot computer. So that is getting hand delivered to Tamarindo, which means we have to sail for 230 miles by hand. And it's gonna suck. It's really gonna suck. Um, that's the most we've ever hand sailed before. Um, but I think it's a good thing. You know, you have to take all of these things in your stride. And I think it is gonna be a learning experience. We're gonna appreciate that uh, autopilot so much more. And also, I'm just gonna buy double of everything for the autopilot. New computer, uh, a spare computer, spare rudder feedback unit, a spare compass everything also if you guys remember the steering episode where we uh thought we had snapped the steering cables but it turned out to be the nuts had backed themselves off on both sides of the tie bar we've now got lock nuts there so that should eliminate that problem from happening again tension on the uh dyneema steering line is still perfect so steering gear is ready to go no autopilot though that sucks also we replaced these universal joints which are at the end of the tie bars. Uh, look how rusty they are. So that center part doesn't even swivel very well. It's all, it's making a grinding noise. So brand new one of them. The next couple of days were spent installing the rest of the Ray Marine equipment, which was all brand new, so it went quite smoothly for us. We were finally at the point where we were prepared to untie the lines, but had a tough sail ahead, hand steering with no autopilot. But first, we had a long weekend away that we had been looking forward to for a long time, where we got to hang out with 50 other sailing channels, and what a crazy event that was. 